this is Boris. Uh, how much, uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. What kind of drop are you expecting? I think? Let me explain this quickly to you, Boris. You know, I, I know that many of you probably don't want to hear this, but I'm going to explain this to you what we see in our data here. And look, guys, many people don't like it when you post negative information on Bitcoin. Remember this here on the bottom, when we hit this bottom here, right here at the bottom, there, on 15 December 2018, when we got there, we made a, a comment and we said that risk adverse investors can now get back in the market. As a matter of fact, we called the low year on 7 December. And many of you know, uh, as a matter of fact, let me just get in there. And, it, and Boris, this will line up with your question. I called the low in Bitcoin there. And Bitcoin went up there and I thought I was so smart and I bought more. And then what happened is, bang, the market dropped a little bit lower. And we had to come back there and say, okay, right, the risk adverse investors can now get back in the market. And on 15 December, we called kind of like a second low. And from there onwards, we said the market's going to go upwards and go sideways. And it was a very confusing time here because this time year was the, was the American shutdown. 40 days and 40 nights is like being on Noah's Ark. Nothing happened. At that point there, I made the comment and I said, this is the low for Bitcoin, but I'm not willing to call the low. Okay, the reason is this. Okay, from that point there, we said in July that we will hit 14,000. You can go back to the reports and have a look. We said in July, it will be 14,000 Bitcoin. We hit 14,000. Then we made the second comment and said on 20,000, when we break the all time high is going to be a critical point. Now I'm probably going to scare a lot of people here, but let me show you where we are, where we have to be very careful. If you think that 1,867 Bitcoin cannot happen, Bitcoin under 2000, then think again. There's a very big probability. Now, if this happens, it's going to turn out very good. Just, just understand me correctly. At that point here, there's a bit of squabble going on. Now, the market at that point, is only going to do two things. It's going to break either upwards or it's going to break downwards. Now, if it breaks upwards, it's going to go, and I'm not, I, I don't want you guys to share this information, okay? Uh, it's going to go to 22,000, the 22, which is the twin, the Bitcoin twin, and I'll explain that later. If we get to $22,000, the market is going to do this and then break out. And I tell you guys now, we're going to go to $80,000 Bitcoin very quick. Okay. But now here is my warning. If we head into this point here of 14,000 and the market does not break upwards here, then be prepared for, believe it or not, guys, 2,000 Bitcoin. Uh, or this is what you can look forward to rather let me just put it in uh, i'll just make it round figures it's actually one eight something now if that happens it will happen so quick and the only reason why it will happen if there is a big financial collapse then bitcoin is going to drop gold is going to drop silver is going to drop Gold drops as well. If this happens, guys, gold doesn't skyrocket. There's a big financial collapse. Why does gold drop? The monetary system shrinks. Imagine there's about $100 trillion. The market drops, the money gets less and less and less and less. People take their money out and simply put it in the bank. They don't move it in silver or gold. Gold drops, silver drops, and everything drops. But this happens so quick. I can't remember the exact timeline, but it happens quick. But guess what happens after that? But then what happens is, is that this market shoots up so quick, so quick that it goes to $3.7 million and it breaks every single idea that people had about Bitcoin. It goes over a million, touches 3.7 million, and people will make insane money. So that is the, the other scenario. So don't let this now scare you and uh, you now get out of cryptos. There's no need to. 
And Marius, is this is Radu? Is this a pattern that that you've seen in the past? No, not at all. No. Oh. So at eighteen nineteen, it'd be a good idea to get into stable coins. It sounds like. This is Tim. Yeah, yeah, you 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 can get into stable coins, but the 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 problem is, you know, is uh, there's an issue with stable coins as well. If you move over into stable coins, so some stable coins can literally disappear. They become they become worthless. But I just want to warn you now: don't get too excited. Don't don't get too excited. Okay. So what happens to Litecoin and Ethereum then? So, Sorry, Wendy, I didn't hear. So, but we are no, at, at that going point, to sell I, I couldn't hear you. Anyway, is that correct? Yes, there's so much interruptions, Wendy, I can't hear you. Uh, just unmute yourself and just ask the question. Marius, it's TG. Um, I, I think if, uh, if it was to sort of collapse down, it would have something to do with, the, like you say, the whole financial system, but I don't think uh, the financial system breaking its back would happen in September. I think it would be more in November. Uh, more to do with Brexit as an excuse with the negative negative yields and all the bond markets. So, and I think that's going to hit more in November. So, hopefully, that that won't happen. Yeah, but remember this, and I discussed this in one of the previous webinars that we that we did just before this one, the one to Africa that you can see now, I'm on the Dow Jones. All that you see here now is just speed wobbles. Now these politicians, they hate Donald Trump so much that they will destroy the American economy to get him out of office. There's a big probability that they will do whatever they can to break the Dow Jones. If that happens, it will be a forced financial collapse. And remember this, there are, you just need to look at the American economy. You need to go and watch Fox News and CNN. And then you see the hatred in America. They will do whatever they can to destroy it. And if that happens, as I say, guys, it will be a forced collapse of the world stock markets. So the world stock markets could collapse at that point, And that could trigger that Bitcoin goes down, gold goes down, silver goes down. But it's going to go down so quick. And then it jumps up quick again, and it comes back like like ten times stronger. Uh, Mark, uh, Vince, right. did you want to? Yeah, Boris and Vince also wanted. Sorry, to ask uh, really, really quick. Isn't there such thing as safety asset? What happens to that if gold, silver, Bitcoin, I mean, real estate? It's got to be something. Everything cannot go down at the same time. Uh, Never you, you'll, yeah, you'll be surprised if we ran if we run the yeah. algorithm data. We see everything drop. Everything wow. drops. Now, uh, even gold. Um, now, remember this gold. Uh, let's just quickly have a look here at uh, the 20. Okay, have a look here, Boris. Can you see here where gold dropped in the financial collapse as well in 2018? I'm here now. Yes, that was the uh, official, I mean, initial reaction to that. Exactly. Yeah, now that's what I talk. Yeah, if you want to. Yeah, and yeah. after that, it spiked. Now we see something similar like that. Remember this gold drop, silver drop, everything in the world in 2018 dropped. In 2008. But I, uh, 2008, but I believe bond market was doing fine. Right now uh, we've got yeah. issues with uh, Chinese currency. We've got other things going on. Yield is inverted. It was 1.6 just uh, yesterday, 10 year treasury. Yeah, I know. But, but the current issue is, is the actual bonds. I mean, obviously, with these yield inversions and everything else, the current issue is the bonds, and it's and it's ironic that literally in this last in this last uh, mark, well, in this market pullback, that we've seen literally everyone running to the safety of of obviously bonds, gold, and some might say Bitcoin now, but then the actual issue is the bonds, and we've seen that through literally yield curves inverting as well. Yeah, look, the markets are uh, they all up in arms. They're all upside down. You can't even look at those figures and understand them anymore. Well, you're in, quite right, man. It's, it's, it's every country in the world as well. So yeah. it's all, all coming to a head. And you are right. Um, it they, does not, doesn't add up, really, does it? So. Yeah. Now, with gold, what we see is uh, if gold spikes out of this channel, yeah, we could see a breakout upwards 
just touching that all time high. This could happen really quick too. So this is, uh, this is due to probably hyperinflation. Now I'm not saying the word, I don't like the word hyperinflation. There's gonna be something else, you know, it's got to do with the tariffs and something all around the world. We don't know yet what it's gonna look like. Uh, silver as well. Uh, just remember this guys that we still see silver because we look at about 982 an ounce. I know it sounds like an astronomical figure, but uh, per ounce, you know, silver is gonna shoot up to that level there. And uh, the best time to buy is now. So start slowly accumulating. Every week or every month, just buy one or two kilos of silver. Uh, oh, one kilogram oh. of silver is about six or 700 bucks, you know, US, so. Are we talking over the next six, six to 12 months? Uh, going into about 20, uh, by the end of next year, we're going to see some substantial moves. So, so it goes in like steps, you know, it goes a hundred dollars up flat step. Next year it jumps again, two, 300 minutes away, 900. You know, here in Australia, all the silver mines are starting to close and they have closed. Can you tell the rest of the story about the silver miners? Oh yeah, we were talking about silver miners here in Australia that they are closing down. There's a whole bunch of mines that have closed down in Queensland where I live, as well as on the uh, in Perth, Western Australia. There's mines also in, in uh, Victoria or New South Wales that have closed down. So yeah, I, I was just really mentioning about the mines that are, are running out of mineral resources oh. with regards to silver. Uh, silver is really scarce. I I find the price of silver at this point really, it's unbelievable that it is that low. But one of the reasons why it is so low is because China, who manufactures 90% of all the probably solar panels in the world, and as you know, silver is the main ingredient when they manufacture solar, solar panels. The better the solar, solar panel, the more silver it will have. So they are manipulating the price. They need it to be low. Otherwise they won't be competitive. You know, this is probably what I'm thinking. But if you look at the medical industry that is using silver as, a, as hygiene applications, hygiene equipment, that's mm. growing rapidly and silver is used everywhere all around the world. So silver is gonna come a point where they can't manipulate silver anymore because they won't be able to get silver. Okay. And that is going to change the price structure completely. And guess what? People like us who are hoarding, I buy one kilogram bars, we hoard, we are not gonna sell that. No, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, nobody. You can ask anybody who's, who's buying silver, nobody right. will, will sell the silver. Everybody tells you that. I thought you were going to say that it costs more money to take the silver out of the earth than the cost of silver to sell it. But I, you're saying that the mines have run out of silver. Is this a global thing? Yeah, it's, it's global. You get big mines like the one in Brazil, which has got like enormous amounts of silver. But the other problem is also remember, remember your, your easy silver is gone where you use the back actor and some equipment, you scrape the surface two, five, 10 meters, a yeah. hundred meters, that silver is gone now. Look at Brazil, how deep they need to go. They have to move a mountain just to get to the silver. So it's costing a lot more. And uh, as we get into inflation, where wages go up, where machinery is a lot more, fuel is now gonna be more, uh, it's gonna cost a lot more to mine the silver. Now we all know that you just look at the, at any financial report of any gold mine. They will tell you that we've mined so much gold, our byproduct is silver, and they give you a cost to mine that silver. And they would tell you that the cost to mine that silver is $112, guys. Go and read yeah. any financial report, but well, they still why... sell the silver at $17. Okay, uh, yeah, that's why I asked the question because I, I, I knew that the cost was, it wasn't worth it. Um, it's good. And this is the reason, remember, that the silver is only a byproduct. Now, um, in some forms, okay, let's say to mine gold, I think it's about $600 an ounce, depending on the mine now. 
to mine gold. Now, the silver is a byproduct, and they put a figure there of $114 to get that silver. But they go and sell it at $16 or $17. Guess what the mines in Australia are doing now? They're not selling their silver. 